In this video, I'm going to show you an application of software defined networking using the Open Daylight controller. In this example, I'm going to show you how to configure an OpenFlow patch panel. So, we're going to create a virtual patch panel in this topology. In this GNS3 topology, I have four routers connected to an open vSwitch switch. So router one has this IP address, router two this, router three this, and router four this. In other words, they are in the 10.1.1.0/24 network and are connected to ports one, two, three, and four on the open vSwitch switch. Please see my other videos which I've linked below, which show you how to integrate open vSwitch and open daylight in GNS3. In this topology, I'm using the management interface of Open vSwitch to connect to the physical network. And I've got the open daylight controller running in virtual box on a PC in my physical network. So open daylight is currently running and the Open vSwitch switch has connected to the Open Daylight controller. As you can see here, the Open vSwitch switch has registered and the four host devices have been picked up in Open Daylight. So this topology represents this GNS3 topology. OpenFlow is enabled on these four interfaces. It's not running on the management interface. Here's my Open vSwitch switch. OVS VS CTL show shows me details of the switch. BR0 is the bridge used by the GNS3 implementation for OpenFlow, and currently it's connected to the Open Daylight controller using TCP port 6633. As you can see, it's connected, and in the output here, we can see that Ethernet 1, Ethernet 3 and 4, as well as Ethernet 2 are part of the OpenFlow bridge. Now, I previously used this command to configure the switch to talk to Open Daylight, so I won't enter that again. This command will show us the ports running in OpenFlow. So you can see port 1, port 2, port 3, and port 4 are sending and receiving packets. This command will allow us to view the flows on the switch. So as you can see, various flows have been written by the OpenFlow controller. The switch is using OpenFlow 1.3. This is a match as an example for LLDP, which is being sent to the controller. And traffic coming in on port one, as an example, is gonna be forwarded out of other ports. Traffic coming in on port four, will be forwarded out of other ports on the switch as well as sent to the controller. So here's router one. Can it ping router two as an example? Yes, it can. It can ping router three and it can ping router four. If I send a broadcast, we should get a reply from those three routers and we do. So both broadcast traffic and unicast traffic are being sent to the other routers in the topology. And that's because of this flow entry that says that traffic coming in on port one will be forwarded out of port four, port two, and port three. It's also gonna be sent out of other ports, but they are not currently connected to the switch and to the controller. Now you could remove these flow entries either directly on the switch or by using an OpenFlow application. Now in this example, I'm using the Open Daylight controller once again. But in addition, I've installed the Cisco DevNet Open Daylight OpenFlow app. You can get this from GitHub. This application uses the REST Conf API for communication to the Open Daylight controller, which in turn writes OpenFlow rules to the switches using the OpenFlow protocol. So on the northbound interface, or NBI, a REST conf API is being used. And on the southbound interface, or SBI, 
the OpenFlow protocol is used by the controller to update the OpenFlow tables of OpenFlow switches. In this example, the OpenFlow switch running within GNS3 will be updated. So I've connected to the controller on port 9000. This is the Cisco application. And as you can see, here's my switch and my four PCs connected to that switch. When I click on flow management, I'll be able to see the flows that have been added to the switch. So in this example, I've got a single open V switch switch running OpenFlow 1.3 and 16 flows have been configured on the switch. So as an example, if we click one of the flows and view it, we can see that this flow entry matches traffic in on port 10 and then forwards it out of a number of ports as well as the controller. What I want to do, however, is override these flow entries. Now we could, as an example, delete all the flow entries if we wanted to. But in this example, I'm going to create a new flow entry on the OpenFlow switch. And I'm going to write a flow to table zero with a flow entry of 102. In other words, I want only router one to talk to router two and not to other routers. I'm going to set the priority to 1000. I'm going to match traffic coming in on port one because that's where router one is. Now, what we want to do with this traffic is forward it out of a port. We could drop it, send it to the loopback interface, flood it, send it to the controller, send it to the normal port. But in this case, I'm going to output it to port two. So traffic that comes in on port one is going to be sent out of port two. Clicking show preview shows us the flow that we're going to write to the switch. So we're going to write a flow entry to table zero with an ID of 102 and a priority of 1000, matching traffic coming in on port one, and we're going to send it out of port two. Now, before I send that to the switch, notice that router one can ping router three and router four. But I'm going to send that to the switch. We can see that it was successfully written. As you can see in the output, the flow entry has been rewritten. You could refresh your flow table to see the latest information. But notice 102 has been written to table zero. On the OpenFlow switch, I could grep for a flow entry with priority 1000. So there's our flow entry stating that traffic coming in on port one will be sent out of port two. So router one at the moment can ping router two, but notice can't ping router three because all traffic coming in on port one on this switch is gonna be forwarded out of port two. Router one can also not ping router four because all traffic is going from router one to router two because all traffic coming in on port one is sent out of port two because of this flow entry. You can see that there've been hits on this flow entry. This flow entry takes priority over the default flow entries because it has a higher priority. The other flow entries have a priority of two whereas this one has a priority of 1,000. So as an example, if we ping the broadcast address, we get a reply back from router two, but we don't get a reply back from router three or router four. So we've successfully configured the network so that router one can only send traffic to router two. Now we may wanna do the reverse. At the moment, router two can ping router one, but it can also ping router three and router four. So perhaps we wanna limit this so that only router one and router two can ping each other. So back in our Cisco app, I'll add a new flow entry to open vSwitch one to table zero. The ID will be 201. In other words, router two sending traffic to router one. Priority will be a thousand. We're gonna match traffic coming in on port two. And the action will be to send the traffic 
out of port one. So preview, traffic coming in on port two will be sent out of port one. Send that to the switch. The flow entry is written, click back, refresh the flow table. Notice here's 201 and here's 102, the two flow entries that we wrote to the switch. Back in Open vSwitch, if I grep for 1000, we can see our two flow entries. Traffic coming in on port one is sent out of port two. Traffic coming in on port two is sent out of port one. Router one can ping router two. Router two can ping router one, but router two can no longer ping router three or router four. We have successfully patched this port to this port and back again. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If it's been of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.